This is a slim thickness radiator with uh, what most would consider normal thickness fans and a high performing pump unit that is definitely being quiet. So I'm gonna test the Silent Loop 3 against this bad boy here. This is a thick rad and uh, we'll see what happens. Welcome to Machines More. So this is gonna be a review of Be Quiet's new Silent Loop 3 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. A big thanks to Be Quiet for making this review possible. They did also send by <laughs> this bad boy. Um, at first I was like, maybe the numbers got transposed because I don't have a reasonable case to test this in yet, but I will try to get to the 420 at a later point in time. So just to note, this video is not sponsored and I've tested this AIO thoroughly, so you're getting my objective and reasoned feedback on it. So Silent Loop 3 is Be Quiet's first AIO that's featuring their newer Silent Wings 4 fans. Uh, these and the Silent Wings 4 Pro are excellent fans, uh, some of the best performing out there, are certainly even more attractive when you uh, take into account the cost uh, versus their competition. Where these fans really excels noise optimized radiator performance and even the non-pro version of the fan that you get here has an RPM range spec'd up to 2500 RPM that'll give you some headroom. Uh, these tested out to 2400 RPM so it's uh, close enough. Um, this will come in 240, 280, 360, and 420. When tested here is a 240 which features two 120 millimeter fans. The ensemble features a 27 millimeter thick radiator. This 240, which means two by 120 millimeter fans, is 277 millimeters long. The radiator has a, fe has a feature that's been part of Be Quiet's AIO philosophy in recent years. It has a refill port on this one, which is located on the side of the radiator. You do get a plastic bottle of coolant that you can use to top it off even as liquid permeates through the tubing over years of use. So it just potentially extends the life of the unit, assuming that the other parts can actually last that long, right? So the tubing is braided, feels flexible, not overly rigid, and that connects to the three chamber pump unit. This has a very high fin density cold plate inside. The pump head looks sharp. There is some RGB lighting within this cover. It's completely optional. You can just not plug it in. But uh, the main feature here of the pump within this assembly is vibration dampened and it's exceedingly quiet as an incredibly well-managed noise. And I'll try to let you hear that shortly because it's actually very difficult to hear. Um, when installing it, the orientation is fairly rigid though. The pump block is supposed to be mounted with the elbows facing the ram slots of your board to the right of the socket. So the cold plate is a long rectangle. This is to accommodate the longer IHS for the Intel 1700 and 1851 CPU. So you can't turn this one 90 degrees. I, I suppose you could rotate it 180, but then you can't reorient the cover. So if, if it bothers you that the brand is upside down, then you definitely wanna stick to the one mounting position that's uh, recommended in the manual. The mounting screws, you can see it's not centered about the frame, but it is centered around the cold plate. So uh, there's a little bit of overhang on the non-elbow side. For today's test, I mounted up with a SUSE's Z890 ITX board and the Intel 285K. And it actually fit within all the heat sinks without complaints, but also without any wiggle room. So it's almost like a you know, razor thin margin here. Looks great. Height of the block is about 55 millimeters when I measured it, so it's not overly tall. I did notice that when I disassembled the unit that the standoff screws had lost their insulation washers, which had been glued onto them, pre-glued. Uh, so do be careful if you ever do need to swap these over to a new build that you do take those off the board. As mentioned, I did want to test against the roughly 100 US Liquid Freezer 3240. And also I am prepping for another item uh, review, which is launching next week. But by comparison, when I mounted the Liquid Freezer 3's block on the same board, it was a huge, enormous pain in the, you know, all the departments. The LF3 uses a contact plate for the mounting, which really isn't an issue here, uh, more so that I had to take off the M.2 assembly. I had to take off the extra fan and RGB daughter board for the Z890i. And then I really didn't want to run a SATA boot drive. So I was like, how am I gonna do this, right? And then I grabbed the, thankfully the dual 4060 Ti with M.2, bifurcated the slot and you know, I was back in business, but it definitely made me appreciate the fit with the Silent Loop 3 more. So. 
definitely do not recommend the Liquid Freezer 3 with the ASUS CA90i. Um, it is, uh, for all intents and purposes, incompatible. And even though the LF3 is a very high-performing unit, uh, one of the best in class, it's just it's not a good fit here. So really good fans, high-end cold plate and pump with a regular rad versus what are pretty decent P12s on the thick rad of the LF3. Tested here at three noise normalized intervals, meaning that the measured noise is the same between the two units. Um, at the lower level, which I would say is unsuitable for something as power hungry as 285K, which uh, here pulling 250 watts for the blender render, Sound Loop 3 is already hit by a big margin. And while this fan level might be okay for 265K or 9900X levels of power draw, um, it's not enough to keep a comfortable margin for the 285K. Faster speed, 1750 on the Silent Wings. Uh, the temp's looking a little bit better here. Definitely still well ahead of the thicker rad here. And finally at the sound level, which represents the max on the LF3 and 1900 RPM for the Silent Loop 3, roughly the same five or so degree gap uh, that we've been seeing. So here the better fans and pump outpace the benefit of the thicker rad and the Silent Wings can actually get faster still because full speed on these, it's way, way, way louder and impractical for regular use. 9.7 decibels over the noise floor here, but more headroom still, extremely good performance. So the overall noise profile is very good. As mentioned, the pump noise is extremely good. I unplugged the fans, nothing running, and I did have to get the mic pretty close to get the sound, but also let's just take a look, a uh, quick listen to the fans before I wrap this one up. So very good noise profile as might be expected from a company with an imperative noise optimized brand name. Highlights of the unit, great performance, understated clean looks. It is refillable. The installation experience was overall quite good. A very quiet pump, even at full speed was just the icing on the cake. Can it be further improved? Yes. So I think the cabling could be a little bit more integrated. So it's, uh, you know, there's just, there's just the regular fan cables and some competitors have daisy chain cables that might be helpful here but you know this is a nitpick so it's hard overall to find fault with it uh pricing 140 us is the market price now which is on the high end for a liquid cooler that is just a cooler meaning you know no, no bells or whistles or a screen or anything these fans are definitely not cheap right and you can see exactly how much a single one of these costs so that's definitely a factor but for how good this thing is and how quiet it is if that is your priority i think this is a very fair price Warranty is a little bit short versus competing products at only three years. So do take that into consideration. So yeah, if clearance is important, you don't need too much thickness for the utmost in cooling performance. Plenty of flexibility in mounting here. So definitely check this one out if you're looking for a high-end 240. Please give a like, make sure you are subscribed. Links are down below. Thanks for watching.